Thank you, Dr. Kim. That was a great presentation. I'm back to Seoul after 15 years, and as I was telling someone, things have changed in an incredible way from the first time I was here. And I'm really excited to be back here because as the rules of the game and healthcare are changing, as Dr. Kim was describing, I think Korea has a lot of the ingredients that are needed to be successful, uh, be it the expertise in AI and digital or the advanced healthcare system, as well as the capabilities to be able to drive precision medicine. All of them coming together put you in a very unique position, and we're really excited to be here to help you on this journey. What I want to talk about over the next half hour, 45 minutes, is about what we see happening overall in healthcare in terms of this next era, as well as what we're doing as Medidata with ACON to be able to support you as part of this transformation. It is really exciting, the age that we live in. For the first time in the history of humankind, you have enormous amounts of data available around the individual. It's not just the data inside the person, be it the genomic, the molecular, as well as the, uh, as well as the diagnostic information that was previously not available, as well as it is all the data around the patient, available through sensors as well as wearables. Uh, it's the behavioral data, it's the environmental data, and it's all of these other, uh, all of these other capabilities that allow you to get a true 360 view of the patient. That had never happened before. If you think about regular care, the only view you get of a patient is every time a patient comes in into a physician's visit, maybe once or twice in a year, and you get a fraction of an information. And now you get this 360 view continuously around the patient. And what this enables is a new era of innovation around this patient. It's precision medicine, be it around 3D printed organs or CRISPR or the CAR-T therapies that Dr. Kim was talking about, as well as even more simply, personalized care. This is things like asthma that allow you to be able to, uh, able to tailor your asthma dosage around the environmental conditions, like the pollen count in the area that allow you to be truly precise in, in how care gets delivered or in glucose monitoring that's truly closed loop that allows you to measure and deliver the insulin dose exactly when needed, or in robotic surgery where you bring in enormous amounts of data around the patient to be able to construct surgical plans that are truly tailored for the patient around the anatomy of the patient as well as the best possible outcomes. This is the age of personalized and precise medicine that we're starting to move into, where the treatments are small, precise, and individualized to the patient to deliver better outcomes. As we think about what is needed to be successful in this environment, we think there's one key. The reason I strike out four is, bef because, bef is because before I came to Medidata, I was with McKinsey for 12 and a half years. And there I advised companies on digital transformations. And one of the articles that I had authored talked about the four keys to transformation. But the market moved so quickly that now we think there's only one real key to be able to successfully conduct a digital transformation, and that is high-quality data. Otherwise, it's garbage in, garbage out. What you need is high-quality, structured, standardized data that allows you to be able to make better decisions and build predictive models. And what we're excited about at Medidata is our 17,000 clinical trials. These are standardized, structured, CDISC format clinical trial data that we have over the course of a decade that allow us to be able to build incredibly precise models. And what we are also building on top of this data is the ability to link this data with both real-world data as well as with early research and translational data. It's all of the various sources around the patient that we were talking about that creates a truly unique data set. On top of this data, what you need is technology to be able to drive speed, scale, and integration with workflows, because that's really how you get the value from this data. And then wrapped around all of this is expertise, to be able to ask the right questions as well as interpret the results that come back. This is really the vision and the philosophy for Acorn AI as we think about enabling the digital transformation. And how that translates is to be able to bring enormous volumes of this liquid data that exists 
around the patient in clinical trials across the various silos in a pharmaceutical company and translate that into a few actionable points. Ultimately, you're looking for that patient subpopulation that is going to respond to your drugs. You're looking for a few control patients that allow you to demonstrate the value of your products. You're looking for a few points that allow you to conduct a digital surgery that delivers better outcomes than you would have with your conventional therapies. And the way we want to bring this all together is through the ACORNAI architecture. It's, it's a set of services and a platform that allow you to do this at scale within your organizations. If you think about the end-to-end -end life cycle of a pharmaceutical product, starting all the way from discovery and research through commercial, there are thousands of use cases. However, we think there are four or five critical questions that matter. And focusing on those questions is really what drives a tremendous amount of value for the enterprise. The first question is how do you make better go-no-go -no -go decisions around your drug in phase one? Prioritizing a drug is what makes a difference between does the drug sit on a shelf for a decade or do you actually bring it to patients faster? Keytruda and some of these immuno-oncology drugs were not moved on by the large pharma companies for many years before they actually started to bring them into market and conduct clinical trials. So that's question one. How do you make better go-no-go -no -go decisions? The second question is how do you improve the speed and success of trials? How do you run trials better? How do you run trials with better intelligence to be able to get drugs to market faster? The third question is in an increasingly value-conscious world, how do you start to demonstrate the value of your drugs to regulators, insurance companies, as well as patients? to get both reimbursement as well as regulatory licensing and, uh, and submission approval. And then lastly, once the drug is launched, how do you connect the next generation of devices that are on the patient, in the patient, and around the patient with the broader data around the patient to be able to create this 360 view that allows you to feed the next generation of research? Around these four big important questions, we have designed our four core products. The first is the value discovery engine, which allows you to make better go-no-go -go decisions around your product. The second is intelligent trials, which allows you to put better sites, it allows you to do better matching for your patient burden, it allows you to design better protocols to be able to run your clinical trials better. The third product is what we call integrated evidence, which is bringing together real-world data with clinical data to be able to create a better evidence package for the full set of stakeholders. And then the last is connected devices, which is how do you start to construct this 360 view around the patient. And all of these four products are built around the metadata platform. What we're starting to do is build these custom data pipes that are built for healthcare that allow you to connect all these various data silos starting from omics and translational data with clinical data that is in CDISC format, with real-world data that includes insurance claims, EMR and lab data, as well as imaging and sensors and wearable data. Bringing all of these data sets together or side by side with these data pipes allow us, allows us to build these products on top of it. What I want to do next is talk you through a few examples of each of these products and the kind of impact that we are seeing with our customers, primarily in the US and a little bit in the Europe these days. So the first one is integrated evidence. Dr. Kim talked about that earlier, about our work with uh, synthetic control arms. And what we do here in the next iteration of our synthetic control arms is to be able to bring the clinical data together side by side with real world data to be able to start to run these analytics that allow you to identify the controlled patients, to be able to demonstrate the value of your products against the standard of care. The example here is the work team did in non-small cell lung cancer with Friends of Cancer Research. And what the team was able to do is construct a control arm using data from multiple clinical trials that we have in our database of 17,000 clinical trials 
and extract out the patients that match the control arm. So we were able to create a control arm without acquiring. We were able to construct a control arm without recruiting a single patient on the right-hand side of this curve. And you can start to see the value of this as you start to bring it to other therapeutic areas, be it in cardiovascular or diabetes or in rare diseases like NASH, beyond oncology. And all of this is possible through our data set of 17,000 clinical trials, as well as our data pipe that allows you to bring your clinical data side by side with real world data. The next product I want to talk about is intelligent trials, which is how do you start to optimize clinical trials for both success and for speed. And here we bring together the clinical data and real world data across a wide set of sources to be able to design better protocols, to be able to do better matching of patients to sites, as well as to be able to predict what the recruitment curves look like so that you can start to intervene earlier in these clinical trials. So this is an example of the work we did with one of our customers in a rare disease in, immuno in immunology. And this was a therapeutic area that the client had never been in, and they had very little data to be able to understand what sites to pick and what, not, what sites not to pick. So what we did is we brought together a diverse set of data sources, both publicly available as well as real-world data, as well as internal metadata to construct this data cube, and we ran, ran the analytics on it. You can either do it with an old school mechanism where you say, here are really the sites that we've always gone to and everyone else goes to, and that's what we should pick. Or you could say that given my protocol, given my patient burden and what my patient journey looks like for my protocol, as well as the kind of patients I'm going after, globally, what are the best sites for us to be located at? And that's really the map that you see on the top, which shows the recommendations from the machine learning engine on here are the sites that you should be selecting for your clinical trial. The second thing that the algorithms also do is give you a GPS that shows you here is what the predictive curve looks like. So you know how much enrollment to expect from each of these sites by what time. So six months down the line, when you start to see the actual results come in, and you can know whether you're performing as you had originally planned, or you're off plan, and if there are any remediation actions that you need to undertake. That's the suite of work that we support with our Intelligent Trials product. The third one is value discovery, which is how do you start to identify a subpopulation of patients that respond to your drug to be able to make better decisions in phase one around what drugs do you want to move forward faster, versus what drugs do you want to slow down? And this is the work that we did with the Castleman Foundation in the US. Castleman's, uh, for those of you who are not familiar, is a rare, uh, rare disease that sits at the intersection of immunology and oncology. And the treatment rates or the response rates for the patients are really low. The baseline is about 12%. In this world, what we did was pool the data from four different sponsors that had genomic level data. Each of the sponsor data was not large enough for them to be able to identify any patterns. But when you standardize the data and bring it together across four of these sponsors, you have a large enough end size that you can run clustering algorithms on that data. And when we ran that, what we found was a subpopulation of patients that had a response rate of 65% versus a baseline of 19%. And this allowed the sponsors to be able to identify a subpopulation that they can start to bring to market faster, as well as it significantly improves the commercial prospects of that drug. The next one I want to talk about is our work around connected devices. This is about how do you start to bring the data around the patients. Everything from EMR data to sensors data to wearables data, to be able to start to create better precision and personalized treatment plans for the patients. In this case, we've been using this with a bunch of digital surgery patients, uh, digital surgery companies that are starting to bring the next generation of surgical plans 
and surgical care. And the kind of use cases that this supports is significant. It's everything from pre-surgical support where you can start to identify what the various kinds of how, how do you start to identify the patients who you best fit with a particular surgical option? Or how do you start to better manage the data that's coming out of all of these surgical procedures to be able to identify what the treatment outcomes should look like? As well as how do you store this information into a patient record to be able to demonstrate the value of the outcomes coming out of these surgeries? And then finally, as these digital devices proliferate, how do you manage the fleet remotely? That's really what this pipeline supports. So this is the overview of the initial set of products that we've launched around Acon that span the full spectrum from discovery and early research all the way through clinical trials, through the evidence generation and submission, down to the post-market and the collection of data around the patient. We've obtained significant success in US and Europe with these products, and we're really excited to launch these capabilities in Asia, uh, starting with Korea. Thank you so much.